Hello and welcome to this special show on Rajya Sabha Television. I am Vishal Dahiya and here we take a stock of the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. Now, one of the very important aspects in this particular battle is the recovery of COVID infected patients and after the recovery, what problems they face in terms of post COVID syndromes, because there have been several cases wherein those who have recovered from COVID-19 infection have complained about certain, you know, health problems which they face for quite a few days or perhaps weeks as well. So we'll try and understand all about the post-COVID syndromes, the reason why these patients might be facing these syndromes and what are the possible solutions out there. For more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests today. Let me first introduce the guest to you, beginning with uh, Dr. Shanto Das. He's uh, Scientist F with ICMR and ICED in Kolkata. We also have with us Dr. Anil Guthu, Director, Professor and Head of the Department of Medicine at uh, Terry Harding Medical College in New Delhi, and Dr. Balram G. Omar, the additional professor of the Department of Microbiology in Ames, Rishikesh. Welcome all of you gentlemen to Rajya Sabha TV. And let me start with you, Dr. Gutu. Let's start by, you know, putting things in perspective for our viewers and try and understand what exactly do we mean when we say post-COVID syndrome? What uh, exactly the term means is there in the word itself post covid after the covid so first comes the covid illness if i were to sketch it along a timeline first comes the acute infection of covid usually the structure or the sketch of this would be that uh, after an incubation period median 5 days post exposure to the infection i develop symptoms the symptoms are those of fever cough and plus minus breathlessness. This constellation of symptoms develops usually median day five after exposure. Now, after that, I become infected and infectious to you, to others. This period of being infected and infectious when the virus is actively replicating within my system lasts for around average seven days, maximum 10 days going by averages. So that is the first peak and down. Seven to 10 days, I am infected and infectious, therefore dangerous for the community. Uh, those who are older than 65 or have comorbidities like diabetes and heart diseases, they remain infected and infectious for a little while longer, say 20 days after the infection. Mm -hmm. I remain, if I am under 65 and no comorbidities, for an average maximum 10 days, Someone who has all that and is above 65 remains infected and infectious for 20 days. Averages we're mm -hmm. talking about, gross. Now, this is the acute sketch, rise and fall of an active COVID infection. We are now concerned with post-COVID. What comes after I have recovered? That is the post-COVID. Now, how do I know I have recovered? If I am asymptomatic, completely asymptomatic, then mm -hmm. 10 days if I'm under 65, no comorbidities, and 20 days if I have comorbidities and if over, 20, uh, over 65 with severe infection. After that, it is assumed that I have cleared all the virus and I am, I've recovered from infection and are not infectious. If that doesn't hold, if there's any doubt, then we get a gold standard check by means of RT-PCR declared cured, negative. So either okay. way, I have now recovered from the acute COVID infection. That's it. Now, if after this recovery, I develop any symptom that becomes post COVID. And if it's a constellation of symptoms that becomes post COVID syndrome, also called long COVID. So okay. this is to keep it everything on the timeline of Acute okay, and, 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 and what, what are those symptoms which, uh, you know, uh, uh, one person uh, or somebody who has been uh, recovered from COVID-19 needs to be uh, on lookout for? What are the range of those symptoms we are talking about here? And how frequent, uh, in, in, in your experience so far, how frequent do these post-COVID symptoms uh, appear in a, a patient who has recovered from COVID-19? It is uh, 
very anecdotally speaking, because it's my personal experience, not really generalizable to the entire field, mm -hmm. uh, quite a lot. Now, what we are seeing here at uh, Lady Harding Medical College follow-up, we are beginning to systematize this into more structured post-COVID follow-up clinics. That's in the process. However, whatever has come to my notice, attention, is that broadly, two symptoms predominate after recovery. If I, if I go by broad uh, impressionistic averages, one is a mental, which is a sense of fatigue mental at the end of the day the person says i have no energy left in me the second component aligned with this is the physical exhaustion i do this much work and i fe i feel completely out of run out of energy to do mm -hmm. more i have no energy and the third related to both of these is that rest does not help me Normally, when we do something extraordinary, mental or physical, rest brings about recovery of energy. But here, both mental and physical energy loss and fatigue and exhaustion do not recover with rest. That's something unusual that they are saying. Not large, but okay. whoever I have talked to. One, this is the first okay. constellation, mental and uh, physical. The second is body aches. Muscle pains, joint pains, non-specific, not too much, not too little, sometimes up, sometimes down, but always there and troubling. The third is these symptoms become the center of focus and attention of this person. Day and night he's worried. Why am I not gaining energy? Why is rest not bringing back my energy? And at the end of the day, they lose sleep. They be, the mornings, they wake up feeling unrested, as though the sleep has not been refreshing enough. That is the this thing. And then daytime, while at work, whatever work, they feel too simple. They experience two other new things. One, what they call everything in the brain appears as though I am in a cloud. It's okay. like fuzziness. They can't describe it, but it's everything is fuzzy. I cannot attend okay. to one or two stimuli or attention pay my attention and focus my attention and retain my attention for long as I used to earlier. So these mm -hmm. uh, three, four are the very common ones. Apart from that, there is dry cough persisting and uh, there is a sense of dizziness. There's a sense of ringing in the ears for some. Uh, two patients I have who have who had both loss of smell and taste, they have recovered and regained their sense of smell, but uh, they haven't really recovered their sense of taste quite well. Two are there okay. right now. Okay. And okay. I, so, so, so these are broadly speaking, you know, uh, post-COVID uh, symptoms or syndromes, which we are talking about as uh, uh, Dr. Guttu spoke. Uh, uh, Dr. Balram, I'd like to bring you in here and, and your views on post-COVID syndromes as, as well as, uh, you know, uh, symptoms, uh, as well as uh, your experience of, of uh, how frequently these, uh, you know, symptoms might appear or um, are there more other symptoms other than what Dr. Guttu is, is pointing out uh, from his personal experience there with the, the COVID infected patients? Actually, in uh, respiratory viral infections, post uh, viral infection malaise is there. But in COVID-19 patients, there is a specific, they, these symptoms persist even after the COVID infection. And in 87% patient, one or the other symptom persists like uh, anosmia, that is loss of sense, loss of smell, right? And uh, some uh, some effect is on also on lungs. Lungs have uh, do not regain their full power. So there is always feeling of breathlessness or uh, not full full breath type. And uh, apart from there, some uh, neurological deficit, uh, not neurological symptoms are also there. So, what all these symptoms are called as that is called as uh, ME, that is uh, myalgic encephalomyelitis, or in other words, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, right? So there is a chronic. Always there is a uh, what uh, Dr. Anil said. There is a brain fog loss of concentration, you you feel that you're not able to concentrate on anything. So there's mm -hmm. a brain fog all over. So 
apart from this also there is uh, sometimes they land up with the stroke also due to uh, uh, development of clots on in various organs or in the brain so they land up in uh, stroke also right now we have we have we have passed only 10 months of covid so we have still to wait exactly what are the symptom uh, symptomatology what are the post covid syndrome what will what it will range in future also okay okay so we 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 need to wait for further studies and research there obviously uh, dr das uh, i'd like to bring yeah. you in here and uh, from icmr's perspective as well since there are certain guidelines and uh, you know uh, a uh, strategy which is being followed to deal with this particular pandemic uh, obviously post covid syndrome is also an uh, aspect which uh, uh, must have been looked into so how would you and the icmr is looking at uh, this particular aspect of uh, this pandemic so actually um, you know i mean uh, till date to date uh, icmr is mostly icmr and the medical communities they are mostly concerned about the the acute fallout of covid infection okay how to get the uh, seriously ill patients out of danger and you know uh, send them home so that is the, the not not only here everywhere in the world so uh, for that matter as uh, dr balram has said it's only few months we do not even know uh, what would, would be the, the the full spectrum of post covid syndrome or you know because uh, post viral fatigue is not uncommon i mean it's very common we, we, we all have felt even after common flu we feel uh, fatigue but this is you know get we get well in few days or at the most you know one or two weeks but you know post when it becomes post viral fatigue syndrome then you know it persists for months now that period has not even come for covid uh, as of now I mean, dr balram has mentioned one study you know that was uh, published in jama Uh, where they found that 87 but then you know there are other studies uh, from britain they said only 10% are having uh, this so that, that, that there will be some variations most of our knowledge so far is from the the long term effect of sars and mars where almost 30% patients even after 5 years they had some respiratory uh, problems okay so that is being extrapolated here to covid now as you have asked me so icmr is now has now started thinking like you know other uh, health agencies uh, elsewhere in the world that for long term follow up of these patients as dr uh, good to uh, rightly pointed out i mean patient goes back home and they are not being able to go back to normal life for months so that is not a you know healthy situation and uh, so i think you know there we can segregate it into two parts one is that there will be some physical or organic uh, abnormalities like say you know severe patients coming out of ards acute respiratory distress you know they may have lung fibrosis okay so there are reasons to be uh, to have uh, problems and then there will be a segment of patients a set of patients which perhaps that would be the larger set and incidentally many of the patient patients they are not hospitalized even so this type of post covid syndrome can come up has been reported for patients who are treated at home with milder disease but they will feel there is no specific organic you know uh, cause to ascribe to their problem of fatigue you know mental fogging uh, and uh, you know exhaustion so okay. these are the these are the groups that you know will require long term studies so there has to be you know long term studies i see man is thinking about it Uh, to start some long term studies of patients who are going back home uh, as of now hospitalized patients going back home and then you know how they are uh, get, getting uh, back to their normal life but you know eventually it may be extended to you know all covid patients and okay. here you know we do not still know so first of all we have to know the determinants you know why why some people are getting the syndrome and others are not getting is it related to their comorbidities is it related to their you know pre existing conditions like you know mental conditions okay so we know that chronic fatigue syndrome can be precipitated on a uh, by a viral infection you know though those people who had it earlier you know it can further get precipitated by a new infection so that can also happen here so i say man is okay. definitely thinking about it 
Okay, so so th there are several aspects which need to be looked into, and as uh, uh, you know, uh, both Dr. Das and Dr. Balram is pointing out, long-term studies might throw some more light here on uh, you know these uh, particular aspects of post-COVID syndrome. But let me go back to Dr. Guthu. Uh, Dr. Guthu, two things. One is the seriousness of these symptoms or this particular syndrome, as in how serious can they be? One and two, what needs to be done to deal with these symptoms? Uh, in a post-COVID scenario by a particular patient or by the uh, clinicians themselves? As regards uh, seriousness goes from my own personal uh, hospital data, anecdotal though, it's not organized. Uh, I've had two or three deaths. Uh, two died from uh, myocardial infarction, the heart attack, uh, four to six weeks post uh, recovery, complete recovery. Mm -hmm. A third died of a stroke. We were, in fact, he was absolutely recovered, absolutely fine in every sense of the word. And uh, five days after full recovery, he had a stroke, was brought back. By the time he came, he was on a, his had a respiratory failure, was on ventilator and he died. But that, that, that also means that there seems to be a, you know, a bit of a correlation between the comorbidity factor and the post-COVID syndrome here because uh, the comorbidity is, is, is also a very important factor when we talk about the fatality rate uh, in, in COVID patients. Yes, but these did not have any background comorbidities, none of them. The okay. last one who died uh, just three, four days ago, he had also recovered uh, two weeks ago. His uh, RT-PCR was negative for active viral. His IgG was positive, suggesting old infection, zero prevalence. Uh, this guy came and he had rapidly ascending paralysis involving that ended up involving all the four limbs, lower both the lower and upper half of okay. the body paralyzed. He went into respiratory paralysis, was on ventilator. We gave him all those drugs. We call it AIDP, technical word, complete paralysis, including ventilator ventilation muscles. And he was on ventilator for three days. We gave him that IVIG and everything, what we give for this. And we could not save him. He had a sudden so, so cardiac... So what, what you're saying is that, you know, it can be fatal. It, fatal. The, some of these post-COVID syndromes, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, symptoms can end up being fatal. Some, not all. Majority, I believe, uh, have nothing more than fatigue and exhaustion or dry cough. or That's the majority we see here. I'm, I haven't really systematized it. We are just beginning to. So okay. I would just uh, speak very anecdotally, episodically. So mm -hmm. majority have nothing more than fatigue and exhaustion, a sense of doom. Nothing will make me come out of this fatigue and exhaustion. I'm mired. I'm really tied up into this. That creates a lot of uh, sadness, a hopelessness, even helplessness, and a loss of sense of agency, a sense of self-efficacy. I can do nothing. And they lose lose out on their wo regular work. Their personal lives uh, life gets constricted. Social life gets constricted, and occupationally they have more of off days from work. So those things are the most common which we see. Not deaths. Deaths are rare, but more dramatic. So I just mentioned it in the passing. But majority do not die. They have exhaustion and fatigue and dry cough and. Uh, such allied symptoms uh, related to virtually every system from diarrhea to constipation to body aches to breathlessness as just uh, stated by Dr. Das and Dr. Balram. So globally, it is uh, a, a really bad uh, episode of exhaustion, helplessness, hopelessness, bad sleep and uh, feeling malaise. Whatever little exertion work they do, they feel absolutely they're ending up in a sense with a sense of malaise, feeling okay. ill. And, and what, what needs to be done, you know, with respect to uh, dealing with these, uh, both from the, uh, you know, a clinician's point of view as well as the patient's point of view? See, there are two, um, there are two segments to this whole, to simplify the structure of this uh, syndrome as I understand it as of today. It will change tomorrow. Mm -hmm. One is the mental or the emotional component where we see a lot of hopelessness and helplessness, a loss of uh, self-agency to control one's life. And uh, that often creates a sort of sadness or depression. Sleep disturbance is associated with that. This is anxiety. This is one component. The second component is physical. Physically, they get exhausted. They feel exhausted. And every little step 
is like a mile or a kilometer of work and they have to sit back and even rest does not bring about relief so for these two the patients we are encouraged until we have better protocols what we are planning to do is to bring in psychosocial supports for the mental component regular sleep mm -hmm. psychosocial support and uh, sort of uh, some attempts to change their belief system in the sense that uh, give them some just positive messages very simple messages you can nothing is going to end you will come out this is temporary you will eventually come out of it and uh, okay. those kind of uh, simple messages directed at positivity regular okay. sleep hours whether you fall asleep or not your bed in bed time should be 8 hours every day and uh, get some distracting act into some distracting activities which which arouse your passions like music whatever art and this is uh, psychosocial supports physically that sense of exhaustion we are asking them to do whatever they can for however time they can but do it and do it as frequently as they can with a strong sense of determination this is temporary and i will get out of it one day with that kind okay. of a uh, thing so little okay. by little exercise and a lot of mental positivity and some social supports to the extent we can build we help them build uh, okay. getting them so, in touch so, with their so, friends so the psychosocial psycho support as well as you know physical aspect of it exercising and then bringing that positive uh, aspect of the situation is something which you're pointing out here dr balram i'd like to bring you in on on these two aspects only the seriousness as well as the way we deal with it seriousness uh, i as uh, dr anil said i want to add it is serious when it comes to stroke or myocardial infarction but it okay. will not happen in all patient it will happen in only one or two percent patient maybe or less but those people who are uh, suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome right they will be having uh, sleep disturbances so they need to be counseled they have to be taught what is sleep hygiene like uh, you have to uh, close off your tv at 10 pm and you don't have to put gadgets you have to you have to take a proper sleep so that sleep pattern is restored second thing is uh, i want to say about the etiology something about the etiology how it happens uh, i think it is the cytokine storm these are some inflammatory substances which are released during the covid infection now these these all these are also released post covid and they crosses the blood brain barrier and affect the brain and different organs brain is mainly uh, affected so you have to do some postural exercises not anaerobic exercises not exertional exercises it will deteriorate the conditions so uh, exercises sleep as counseling as dr guttu sir said and uh, uh, you um, okay treat, treatment with uh, to uh, reduce the cytokine inflammatory substances okay okay so the, these are the aspects let's have uh, the final concluding comment from uh, dr das there dr das uh, from your point of view uh, the seriousness obviously as you earlier pointed out uh, would uh, more or less uh, you know we'll get to know much more after the long term studies but initially as both dr gurtu and dr palram is pointing out if it has uh, uh, something to do with the stroke then obviously it might end up being fatal but then most of these uh, symptoms uh, are uh, you know are not that uh, serious uh, for the uh, uh, you know patients in a post covid scenario so yeah i think you know even if uh, very few patients you know end up um, uh, being uh, fatal um, after complete recovery so uh, still these are important so maybe you know time to time uh, coagulation profile uh, doing coagulation profile Uh, or you know the lung function test so oh, these things we can always do because we know that there are thrombotic microangiopathies uh, in covid so we should see that if these these are happening but for most of the patients what as dr guttu has said you know uh, elaborated very nicely that how to get them back to their normal life so gradually through because you know initial period if you just ask them to do too much so that is what will happen you know if a tired horse is being whipped so they they will you know uh, break down so it has to be gradual 
and there are different you know therapies so there are exercise therapies there is ergo therapies so they will be encouraged to do exercise but only up to a point of mild exertion and then you know taking rest and then you know all this sleep hygiene one very important thing is that food okay so they have to have very healthy food uh, so home cooked preferably you know uh, low fat um, type of food and then uh, another thing is that um, one important thing is that perhaps you know this is still again it's not clear but as we are having getting more and more patients so perhaps how the patients are treated at the early period has something to do with the long term consequences so that has to be okay. also kept in mind so you know treatment of patients acute patients uh, is has a bearing on the the long term consequence of chronic fatigue syndrome so that keeping that in mind we should perhaps also uh, you know um, like um, organize the treatment okay um, uh, or um, and also there are some groups like you know there is a facebook group uh, so mm -hmm. the patients who recovered how they are going back so this type of pr groups actually help okay so you okay. know we will have many of that so if they meet together talk to them or you know even over telephone they contact so they can be encouraged to do things that others have done so i okay. think you know good food proper rest gradual uh, going back to the normal activities these are the key to to uh, complete recovery okay okay and then looking at it uh, uh, from a positive angle you know bringing in that positivity as uh, dr guttu was also pointing yes. out thank you so much uh, dr das there dr anil guttu and dr balram for sharing your views on this very important aspect in our battle against covid-19 pandemic that is uh, post covid syndrome now the symptoms as our panelists are pointing out may vary we might require long term studies to know much uh, finer details about these but what we understand right now is that these symptoms can be dealt with through both physical means as well as psychosocial support the theme of the matter is that one has to stay positive and try and ensure that they remain in good health seek support from your friends from your family and from your doctor as well if the problems persist thank you so much once again we'll come back with a different topic till then keep watching ajisabha television